How's it going guys? My name is Tavarsh and I'm joining you on a very, very hot Florida summer day to show you how to polish your own car by polishing my very neglected SL55 AMG. Actually, I don't think I should be showing anyone anything because I have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm joining you on a very, very hot Florida day to show you this, this is my 2003 SL55 AMG. Now, those of you who are new to my channel, first of all, welcome, hope you like it, but uh, those of you who have stuck around to see all my videos on this uh, particular car, will know this car as uh, the one that is the cheapest one in the country. What I'm doing today is uh, something that I actually haven't done to basically any of my cars. I'm gonna be cleaning it. And I really don't do cleaning that often uh, on my cars. I'm more about uh, the performance aspect of the cars. I'm more about uh, making them into good drivers, not necessarily the cleanest thing on the planet. But uh, this definitely needs a clean. I'm already starting out on a, actually two bad feet because you're not supposed to wash it when it's really, really hot because the water evaporates quickly. And you're not supposed to wash it in direct sunlight. So. It is really hot and we are in direct sunlight. So let's see how this turns out. So the first thing I'm gonna do with this car is give it a basic wash. Now, if you don't know how to wash your car, then uh, you're in luck because I'm about to show you. But uh, if you know how to wash a car, you could probably skip this or uh, tell me where I'm wrong because I am not Larry Casilla. I am not uh, Matt Mormon from uh, Obsessed Garage. I am a hobby uh, car polisher. Uh, I am not even that, actually. I've, I've polished a car maybe a handful of times in my life, and uh, I've washed the car maybe a handful more. So uh, take everything I say with a grain of salt, but I don't think I'm that far off. What I like to do is I like to have two buckets, uh, one for clean water and one for dirty water. And uh, the clean one, I just put a little stripe of tape just so I don't get confused. And I have a wash mitt. Actually, I have multiple wash mitts here. Uh, just get a concentrated car wash. It doesn't really matter. You can actually use dish soap because we're not going to want to uh, put any shine on the car now. All we want to do is going to get off that top layer of debris and uh, nasty crud and caked on mess that uh, this car has had for quite some time. I mean, honestly, I've washed this car twice and it has never looked good. So we're trying to trying to make that happen today. So it's gonna be really cool watching from your angle in, in just about a second because I'm gonna start washing the car, but uh, I'm gonna speed up the footage so you guys can see how quickly the water evaporates. So that should be interesting. Okay, washing the car was step one. Drying the car is step two, and uh, there really isn't anything um, specific about this, uh, except you don't wanna use a chamois. Uh, you don't wanna use something where it will pick up those uh, little pieces of dirt and grit and uh, basically scratch the hell out of your paint. So what I'm using is a regular microfiber towel, and just do it in one direction. I have it folded into forks, and perhaps I shouldn't be holding two at the same time. Just go in one direction. And it does a pretty good job of drying out the wet spots. It does look better already, but this is very, very far from being finished. And uh, what we're gonna do next is pretty much the hard part, and it's gonna get our paint uh, that much better. Right now, I was just taking off the first layer, the first uh, tiny layer of filth, but uh, this next part should be should be pretty good. But before we get to that next part, I have to dry off this whole car. So how about how about let's take this as a given and uh, we'll return in three, two, one. Now that the car is dry, this would usually be the point where uh, I put some wax on it and uh, call it a night. But we're not even close to done. So our next step is uh, using this 
weird looking thing here. Uh, this is a uh, thing called clay bar and some of you may know what it is. So clay bar is a really good tool at getting all the imperfections out of your paint. Since we're doing a polish and paint correction on this car, uh, I wanna make sure that no uh, embedded little nuggets of, uh, of this car's checkered past uh, stay in the paint for when we polish because when you polish, you're basically taking off that first thin layer of clear coat. It's a very, very thin layer, but uh, it is crucial and it gets all those scratches out by making lots of lots of tiny little scratches. If uh, we look into this paint, there are a lot of scratches. There are a lot of uh, nasty little little morsels that this clay bar will, uh, will pick up, but um, we need some lubrication. You can't just put clay bar on a dry car because it's, it's just not gonna work. It, it'll introduce a lot more problems. So a really interesting uh, and free tip, instead of uh, using spray wax or some kind of lubricant, just take your wash mitt and uh, give it a little bit of suds, put it up like that, and now you have a source of lubricant. So I can feel like, I don't know, you guys probably can't hear that. That feels like sandpaper to me. And it's really important for you to get a feel of things uh, because that's when you know when to stop with this. So I'm just gonna use some of this lubrication and kind of go back and forth. And I feel it getting smoother already. <laughs> All right, so let's see if you can, you can pick that up. That is literally just 10 seconds of me doing this and uh, it's picked up all that dirt and that's after me washing it and uh, uh, going over it with the wash mitt a few times so this whole car needs this treatment and um, I am going to use more than just this piece but uh, so you don't run out uh, what you have to do is basically knead it and fold it over so you have a nice clean piece and also if you drop it on the floor, it's trash because it's gonna pick up rocks and stuff and you don't want that going in your paint. But uh, it's very important that you knead it and then use the clean part, nice blue part, uh, so we can uh, we can get all the contaminants out of our paint. This is gonna take a long time. All right, the car is clay barred and that took a very long time. In fact, it's the next day and I have the car in the garage because it's really hot outside. It's like seriously hot. If you guys have ever been on the surface of the sun, it's uh, it's like that, but hotter. But this car looks pretty damn good. I mean, there still is a lot of uh, swirl marks uh, and just scratches, but that's what we're gonna take out, at least try to take out. So you guys can see the before and after. I'm going to tape up the middle of this and I'm gonna leave one side completely exposed and, uh, and unloved and uh, one side I'm gonna give the full treatment of uh, polish and wax and all that so you guys can see the difference between, uh, between the two. As far as what I'm gonna be using to polish the car, I'm just gonna use this, uh, this D8, it's a Porter Cable. It's actually a very, very good value for the home DIY uh, first time novice polisher like me, that, that would be me. And uh, I'm using just a regular pad. I'm not quite sure what the difference between pads is. So if anybody can uh, can tell me what the difference is as far as uh, colors and uh, different compounds. This one seems to be foam and it has these little, little dimples. I'm not sure if that's correct, but that's the one I'm gonna use. I do have a ton of them, but I don't know which ones to use uh, on this. I am gonna be doing a fair bit of cutting into the paint. And uh, cutting just means taking off the first layer. And it's not really the paint, it's the clear coat. So what I'm gonna use for that is this Meguiar's M100, or rather Meguiar's 100 uh, Pro Speed Compound. So it's not gonna polish, this doesn't leave a polish. It uh, introduces a lot of very, very fine scratches. So consider this like liquid sandpaper. So when I apply this, uh, this is gonna look a lot better uh, from a little bit away. You guys are about, I'd say, four to five feet away. But when you get up close, there still are gonna be some micro scratches. So what I'm gonna use after that is, I don't know, I probably have some other polish. I'll, I'll get to it later. But uh, for now, I'm gonna use this and we'll see how it goes. Did I say I wasn't professional? I'm not a professional.
All right, now we're going handheld mode so I can show you the before and after. Now, this might look clean on camera, but if you look, if you look right over here, you'll be able to see these swirl marks. And uh, let me see if I can get, all right, yeah. You can see when I move, you see those swirls and those kind of uh, hazy lines everywhere. This is a problem mainly on black cars because it's reflective and it acts like a mirror. So every single imperfection in the paint uh, and scratch, and there are a lot of scratches on this paint, uh, it'll come out like this. Now, this side is not perfect. If we can focus in, just stare at uh, one of these two uh, uh, light sources here, and you can see that there are a lot of swirl marks. And if we cross over here, there still are swirl marks, but there are a lot less. So arguably this isn't the best job in the world, but then again, I am a novice and I think that this needs a uh, bit of wet sanding, maybe with some uh, very, very fine grit just to get everything level. Right now there are some pretty deep scratches. So from five feet away, it looks fine. Um, and some angles, it looks really good. Like if you, if you kind of put it at this angle, it looks like a mirror, but yeah, if you come up close, it's not the best. There are some scratches, swirl marks, but this is a lot better. This is 10 times better than what was here just a day ago when, when it was just a nasty, nasty paint job. And if we go from another angle, it does look pretty presentable. It does look very, very smooth. There actually isn't a lot of orange peel in this paint, which I do like. I don't like the swirl marks, but uh, the nice smooth glass-like finish is very, very good. So what I used for this, uh, sort of kind of paint correction is this M100 Meguiar's. And that is, uh, that is pretty good. I think it's uh, one of the best on the market. And you can find this in Eddie AutoZone. I also used for polish, I used this uh, Manzerna Intensive Polish. And this is uh, a medium to fine polish. And to top it off, I use this. This is the Colonite 845 wax and this is really really good bang for your buck but you do need to get it warm so you need it uh, consistency of around milk so make sure that this is warm before you put it on but this this stuff is really really good so this is turning into quite the project as you can see i have pretty much exhausted myself for the second day in a row and i'm not even done so anybody that does this professionally again you have my wholehearted support I just wanted to um, give some attention to this. So this car is not perfect body-wise. It does need some body work. The other side has a really kind of nasty dent here that I could probably take out with uh, some paintless dent repair. But here, this looks like a pretty nasty scrape. Now, it's, it's deep. It's not like it can be buffed out. And it goes all the way to the door. So this will need some body work. So, uh, if I'm gonna be polishing, I'm gonna make sure that I don't go here just because I don't want it eating away at the pad. And plus, I don't wanna take off any material here uh, to introduce maybe some rust. But uh, other than that, the front bumper is in really bad shape. The front bumper is cracked in multiple places and it looked like it had been painted by a five-year-old with a spray can. It's really bad. So I'm gonna need to take that to a body shop. But everything else on the car is uh, is ready to be polished and the paint brought back to life like we did on the trunk. So I do have some work left ahead of me, but uh, we still have a good few hours left in the day. So I am going to uh, bust my butt and get this paint corrected. And I can't wait to see what the results are. Okay, we are almost done and my fingers are uh, tired, but 
The car is looking way better. But I'm gonna do something that you guys have been asking me to do for quite some time, and that is polish these headlights. Now, these headlights uh, are quite pitted, they're yellowed, and it's uh, hazy, and it's just a mess. This car is, uh, well, it was very expensive when it was brand new, and they should not be looking like this. So all I'm gonna do is take my DA uh, polisher with uh, that same green pad. I think I need to clean this pad uh, at some point, but uh, I have some of that Meguiar's M100 on here, and I'm just gonna go over this and see if we can't get this to polish up nice and good. Nice and good? That makes no sense. All right, we are done. Look at how good this looks. So it isn't perfect by any means. I am not a professional detailer, but I am very, very pleased at how this came out. I mean, the paint was, you can see all the scratches and, and all the kind of uh, scuff marks and all that stuff in the paint, but now it's just, it's very, very smooth. It feels, it feels smooth, oh man. There's no hard ridges, it's not that nasty sandpaper feel. This is a very good looking car. And it's good that I made it look good because it's about to start driving a lot better. So the next episodes with this will be uh, sort of a little more gung-ho on the turning it into a manual aspect of this build. I know I've been uh, kind of leading up to that, but uh, we will get to that in the next episodes. I don't know if it's gonna be the next, next episode, but uh, probably will. So uh, don't hold me to that, but maybe do. So as always, everything that I used in this episode, all the cleaning products and uh, all the tools, that's gonna be in the description below. But uh, if you like this video, and I really, really hope you do, then consider subscribing. You can hit that subscribe button or you can hit that little bell next to the subscribe button. That is a notification button and uh, I want you to be part of my notification squad. You get notifications every time I release a video on this or any of my other cars. If you'd like to support me in my builds, you can go ahead and buy this shirt. Link for that will be in the description. I have other shirts featuring this very car, so check that out. If you'd like to contact me, you can reach me at the Real Tavares. that is Instagram and Twitter. Facebook.com slash AskTavars and AskTavars at gmail.com is my email. And I do read every single one, even the ones I'd rather not read. But until next time, this is me telling you that on cars like this that are really, really rough around the edges, but require a little bit of elbow grease to get 100%, well, at least almost 100%, you guys need to wrench every day.